Hi, Peter Borker here, and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy. Now, joining me today in the studio is Roger Curry, and he is the founder and creator of Market Vulnerability Analysis. Welcome to today's episode, Roger. Thank you for having me. Now, the reason I wanted to bring you on was it's been an interesting 18 months with the pandemic. A lot of people out there have struggled. There is no shadow of doubt. But actually, in the first time in our history, we've seen such generous government subsidies for yeah. people that have not been able to work. People have been working remotely. People have been staying at home. All of a sudden, there's been more money on deposit than ever before, ever yeah. in sort of history. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, when, when you've got money at your disposal... I mean, yeah, people have done their working on their house thing and sort of making worse home improvements, but there's that excess cash. Correct. And when you've got excess cash, a lot of people, because you can't travel, can't go away on holiday, people want to know what to do with it. And I've heard a lot of whisperings of people saying, well, I, would, I should really be investing it. Yeah. And where do typically people go to invest? Stocks and shares tends to be one of the first places to go. Now, you can either make a lot of money doing stocks and shares, right? Or you can lose an absolute fortune. Correct. And I suppose one of those things is you've got people that are amateur traders hoping for professional results. That's and unfortunately, true. instead of increasing their wealth, they very often diminish their wealth. However, you've got something in place that can help take the risk out of it and actually help people make that transition from a amateur investor to more of a professional investor. Isn't that right? That's correct. And, and, and actually, um, to, to be a little more accurate, I'd say that it's not so much taking the risk out as it is taking the gambling and speculative aspect out of it. Um, there's always going to be risk, but the risk when you can control it, it's contained. Uh, what market vulnerability analysis does is it uniquely enables and empowers the individual uh, to have a level of control, objectivity, confidence in um, their analysis and ability to forecast the markets and, and price movement. And, and really, even more importantly, be able to forecast risk as it expands and contracts. And so what we do is I help people take um, a level of control over their performance outcomes and their experience. So it's not a stressful, you know, endeavor along the way, right? And it doesn't matter. People kind of feel intimidated by money and, and investing, especially those who've had no previous experience with that. Those people tend to, to, to be the best clients because they actually will just follow directions. They don't want to make, <laughs> make their own assumptions. People who have experience sometimes want to learn from me and, and then they want to do it their way. And it, it's like, you know, you've got something that's been working a certain way, proven, tested for 10 years, um, you, it's, it's so important to follow directions, but yes, essentially what I enable people to do is to engage the financial, financial markets in a way that gives them confidence where they're, uh, going to be right, no less than 80% or better of the time. And we flip the risk reward paradigm on its head. You know, traditionally we know that the risk reward paradigm says, well, if I want to generate higher returns, I have to be willing to take on more risk. Uh, but if I, don't want a whole lot of risk, then I have to be willing to accept a lower return. Well, market vulnerability analysis flips that on its head. And because of its unique real-time ability to tell you in real time with great accuracy, 80% or better accuracy, what's going on with the market, where it's headed, uh, what should it do, what shouldn't it do, what happens is you're, you can restrict and limit your downside market risk without limiting or restricting your upside profit potential while maintaining that 80% plus win rate. And that's what a lot of people do though, don't they? They're all in and all out. So instead yeah. of sort of managing it, they, start, they kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to get out now. Well ahead of the peak. And I suppose they don't quit. They do a lot of work for mediocre gains. That, that ends up being the, 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 uh, the outcome, right? And that's, see, and what you just stated is a very common, you know, Hot shot guess and hope experience. You know, we're, we're hoping and guessing, right? I've been there, done there. I've also been, I've actually been in, across the entire spectrum 
where I've invested, didn't know when to get out. Great example of that would be the dot com boom. Yeah. Yeah, I made a lot of money and lost it all literally within a week. Yeah, within a week. I lost it all within a week. And that's, I had a, a, a um, bef- it was just about, now, so in 2008, I hadn't finished wrapping up the methodology until I was, until 2010. But I remember I had a, a relative who lost 15 years of their gains in a couple of weeks, literally 15 years. I mean, that's crazy. With, with the methodology, you know, the, corner, the coronavirus crash that we had, mm-hmm. had a, I was so proud of this, this client. Um, he had, um, I was away and he, um, he had seen that the, we'd had, the market made new highs, but then the market pulled back and he saw that the pullback after the highest high that we had in the market, the pullback came with uh, and, and kind of shifted the entire market environment in such a way that he said, "Uh oh, this just shifted in a way that's going to look like the odds are strongly in favor of a more significant correction if I stay in here. So what did he do? He called his asset manager and said, hey, take my long-term uh, 401k, all my retirement portfolio, move it all into cash. So he moved everything into cash. And then on his little brokerage account, he took a short on the S&P 500. And then of course, the next couple of days, you know what happened, the market just vomited and just took a dump. Right, he made 35 percent, I think, in two days on his brokerage account. But then he avoided the big thirty percent drop on his long term portfolio. And then when it bottomed down, began to recover, he was able to get back in and, and enjoy the the upside rather than riding the downside and then waiting to fill that hole back up. I, people don't realize if there was a fifty percent correction, the market would have to double in order for you to get back to break even. So it's it's not just a matter of it comes back to where it was. If you lose fifty percent of your money, you've got to you got you have to have a doubling effect before you can get back to where you were before you lost. So once you get beyond losing ten percent, it starts to require a lot more in return for you just to get back to break even. So why even allow yourself that kind of risk, right? Don't allow yourself to give back those kinds of gains. Now people but say, do you well, think wait a people second. do that because they just don't under, they don't necessarily understand it in that way. Correct. They don't understand that. And, and I think uh, now before market vulnerability analysis was born, there was no real way to, to know how to do that. So, so it, it, in everyone's defense, you know, this is a paradigm shift. It's a, it's, it's a innovative first. Now it's been around for 10 years, but most people don't know about it because I'm not a, I'm not a marketer. I'm not out here to just get out of the mask. But, I, but I, when people invite me to speak, I'll, I'll speak. And most of our clients have been word of mouth referrals. And I just enjoy the personal relationship that I have with clients. So I've kind of my, my business model has been really focused on and designed kind of for my own personal interaction. I'm an extrovert. I enjoy people's you know, uh, relationship with me. I, I'm not in this to, to sell as many things as I, you know, we, we actually have a qualification process um, to make sure that it's the right fit and, you know, that it, there's no personality conflict and it's, and I can guarantee person success, uh, because I won't take someone on unless I can be confident that I can guarantee their success with the outcomes. But, um, the idea though, is with market vulnerability analysis, you're, you're able to, uh, analyze and identify the environments in the market that are conducive for a significant correction or a crash because they can't happen unless the environment is there for the market to shift dramatically lower. I'll give you an example. Um, If people, um, well, coronavirus is probably the best example because that was the most recent thing in people's memory. Just like in the same way that you and I couldn't walk out under a clear blue sky and have it suddenly, you know, thundering and, you know, raining over us, it takes clouds to develop and build, which take time. It takes a certain environmental factors in the weather to create an environment that allows those clouds to produce rain, right? All of those factors are both identifiable they're, they're, and they're measurable because they take time to build and that's what makes them forecastable. So what market vulnerability analysis does is for the first time, it enables a person to identify all the factors that actually cause prices to move up or down on the market. And so it, it, you can see the environment that's actually beginning to build 
that allows you to take defensive action against a significant downturn. And I'll say one more thing about that. What makes us so different is because the vast majority of the financial industry from professionals onto retail and amateur traders and investors, they focus on fundamentally one or two, maybe three different factors that, that help them to analyze and make decisions on what they want to go in and out of. And that is generally fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And they might use news or market sentiment, but there's actually eight major factors that I've identified that are, are involved in causing prices to move up and down. So if you're only focused on one, two, or three of those factors, you're gonna be blindsided by at least five to six other factors you have no idea are working against you. And that's why most people experience inconsistency. And that's why people struggle to hold on to their gains. They'll make their gains, they'll be their bull market geniuses, but then when the market shifts, suddenly they evaporate. And so they don't know how to handle it when things shift. You know, all boats rise with the tide, but the trick is, do you know how to keep and maintain those gains when the market shifts against you? And that's the key. And that's interesting because whether it's, so any market condition is good, whether it's a bull or a bear market condition, exactly. all it depends is how you ride that wave. That's what you're saying. Exactly. So if you look at my client's track records this past year or two years, even you'll see that, you know, you might see, well, those are impressive gains. And you think, well, but, but the market's been going up. Well, let's take a deeper look at their, their track record and their account. When you look at their account, you find that 40 to as much as 60% of their positions in the market were actually short. They were against the move up. So now that's that, and we're not saying that they were making money with the move going up, but we're saying as the market was going up, the market goes up and comes down, goes up and comes. So they were very accurate in forecasting when the market was actually topping off and ready to push back down. So when you have a 40 to 60% of the account profitably engaged as the market's going down, that means this person knows how to handle both up and down movements. And you'll see what's, what's really impressive is when they're actually making money both on the up and down, their actual total win rate on the account is 90% and higher. 80, I don't even let my clients go into the market with real money unless they have at least an 85% win rate. They have to be right about their decisions at least 85% of the time or better. Now, the reason I do that is there's a wisdom behind applying the methodology. People say, well, if you can forecast the markets, you should be in all the time and you can make as much money as you want. Not so. Just because the market's forecastable, it doesn't make it tradable or investable. So what you have to have the wisdom for is to know that there are moments in the market where you can forecast, yes, the market will be going from point A to point B with an 80% probability. Great. And as long as you can make at least in return what you're having to take into account for risk or better, right, then that's a great opportunity. But you also want to know that the environment is conducive where, the, where there's a, enough of a quality of environment that your, your um, experience along the way to hitting your target is not stressful. You're actually enjoying what you're doing. If you see that you're in a stormy situation um, and, and the odds are still there and there's enough return for the risk, you need to have the wisdom to know that if I happen to notice the, the volatility swings, I might, might, might not be able to handle that emotionally. I could take my, my eyes off the, the objectivity and become subjective and make poor decisions, right? And why? Panic decisions. Yes. And why does that happen? Because if I put myself in a stress-filled, pressure-filled scenario, let's take a simple example like driving your car late to an appointment. You have an important appointment that you're going to. You know how to drive a car. You know the rules of the, of the, the road. Why is it that you'll drive the car differently when you're under pressure than when you're not under pressure? You'll push the envelope, you'll drive more aggressively. And now the risks increase dramatically. That you're going to get pulled over by a police officer and get a ticket or get an accident, right? Because you're aggressive. Why? Because you're under pressure. So in the market, it's important to know that just because I know what I can expect doesn't mean I should be involved necessarily. I think the focus here for people should be, let's not just only look for opportunities to make money. That's going to blindside us. Rather, we should look for opportunities that are not likely to lose money. Everything changes with that perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, most people don't think that way. Mm -hmm. They think about making money, not, not losing money. That's correct. And before market vulnerability, vulnerability analysis, they never really had a way to 
objectively measure and identify those scenarios to begin with. So to be fair, it's not like this was like, they're doing something wrong, it's their fault. They, were, they have to be equipped to be able to make those decisions objectively and accurately with consistency in a sustainable way, with no excuses. <laughs> no, no, totally get that. So here's a question for you. I know people listening in, they're gonna be thinking, okay, well, this sounds like something for people with big money. Now, when you talk about investing, what kind of figures do people typically need to have to start thinking about, okay, well, let me start getting into this kind of investment scenario. That's such a great question. Hardly anyone ever asks that. And, I, and that's one of the reasons why I love your podcast and I just, you, you, your approach to everything, your sensibility, the wisdom that you provide your audience is, was very attractive and very, I was just very impressed, very attractive Thank to you. me. So um, that's, so a lot of people see a lot of messages, unfortunately, the industry wants to sell you on all kinds of get rich, you know, quick ways, okay? Um, it's such an irresponsible way to advertise to people. It, it's a disservice. It's intellectually dishonest. Can it happen? Does it happen? Yes. Can you make a lot of money quick? Yes. But, but, it's, but the focus shouldn't be on making money quick. The focus should be on a process that delivers a very specific set of results. And, and because of the consistency and a, a diligent application, that can allow your account to compound and easily outperform the market and generate great returns. I've got several clients that will replace their full-time income over a two or three year period, being consistent with just a 10 or 15 hour week commitment to the market, very part-time morning, what? early morning or, or late in the evening, it doesn't matter, you know? But the thing is the kind of capital I think that I think is appropriate. If you can't comfortably invest at least 50,000 in the market, and that's capital that you can afford to lose, even though we're not here to lose it, and we, we're, we, we focus on a, on a performance outcome that's got an 80% accuracy, you don't have that, that's, that's not the point. It's the mental, uh, you see, when you put yourself in a mental state where you have a confidence and a comfort with what you're investing, then that allows that person to be responsible in their application of the methodology. And I'll tell you what's the problem here. The methodology equips a person to be able to analyze and forecast the market with a high degree of accuracy, 80% or better. Well, that can make you a little bit cocky and overconfident. Um, you need to be satisfied with making good re returns that outperform the market, okay? But you don't wanna be negatively motivated where you have such a small amount of money that you can't help but make aggressive decisions and right. abuse what you have, you're gonna, again, it's being under pressure. We wanna avoid the pressure. So I think it's really important that, you know, invest in other things, work in other things, build your business, grow whatever you, your, your capital, your seed money to a place where you can actually invest where that, the, the returns you make are meaningful and impactful enough that you're not motivated to push the envelope and become aggressive, right? It's, it's a little bit like taking a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and putting it in a 16 year old hand, right? They yeah. just got their license. What, what do you think the odds are of them keeping that thing safe away from accidents? No, pretty, it's gonna be a car crash waiting to happen. So what you're basically <laughs> saying is actually take the recklessness out of it. Yes. Now, if people wanna know more about you, more about what you're talking about, where do they need to go? The best place to go uh, is raiseyourfinancialiq.com. Just the letter I, letter Q raiseyourfinancialiq.com. There's going to be a case study there. Uh, there's going to be a, about a four-part uh, little educational page that's going to give you all the information, understand all the eight, eight major forces of supply and demand that cause prices to move, what causes the inconsistency, what causes people to take ridiculous risk. This is something that will allow people to avoid having to hold on to large drawdowns. It avoids having to take big risks to accomplish their, their, uh, you know, their goals in the market outperform with consistency, with confidence, without the stress, you need to be able to enjoy this. Right. right. And I think that's a great place for them to start is raise your financial IQ.com. Brilliant. We'll send them there. Well, thank you so much for today. I mean, it's been absolutely fascinating speaking with you. If anything's resonated with you today and you want more information, head over to booker.com and get in touch. Once again, Roger, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. And most importantly, everyone, remember, failing to learn is learning to fail. So please stay safe.